Well, welcome to another uh, lesson from Merced Community College Student Help Desk. And this lesson, we're going to learn how to create SharePoint websites uh, with restricted access permissions. Uh, that is, we're going to have ad administrators, collaborators that will be able to uh, uh, administer the site. And we're going to have uh, also viewers, people will, that will be allowed to look at the site. On this lesson, we are not going to analyze how to set those permissions on independent documents and files uh, or folders within the site. We're just going to address uh, the global subject, which is how to create a subsite uh, with uh, restricted access and uh, specific permissions for different kinds of users, administrators, collaborators, and only viewers. Well, the first thing we need to do is going to be, again, a five-step, uh, uh, three-step process. Okay. First thing, we go to mc for me mccd.edu or my site mccd.edu. Then we're going to log in with your credentials. Please uh, see how is it that I am putting my uh, email, not only my username, but my email. You know, I do that because sometimes uh, just putting your username doesn't work. So the way I'm telling the system where to look for me which is at mccd.edu, that's what that means. Then I'm going to click, so there I am. I'm on the Merced College mc for me portal. Now I'm going to go to my site. So you see, on the upper right-hand side corner, in very small print, besides my name, it says my site. So I'm going to click there. That way I get the full features of uh, the site actions button. So the first thing we need to do is go to the site actions button. Make sure, in case you don't have it set, that the publishing feature is turned on. So we click on site settings. Then we're going to go on the last column where it says Site Collection Administration to Site Collection Features. And I will scroll down to the item that says Office SharePoint Server Publishing Infrastructure. Okay. So, I'm going to make sure this is active. We have, if it's not active, you need to activate it. Since I already activated this feature, you see, there's a blue button stating that fact. So I do not need to activate it. Okay. Second step we're going to create a subsite. And it's going to be, as we said, a restricted subsite. Because maybe you want to have only your students for, from your particular class look at the content. Or maybe you're collaborating with a team at the college for student uh, learning outcome uh, product. So you need to have certain people being able to modify and edit uh, the documents. You want other people to look at the documents only uh, and you want the, the rest of the population, college population, not to be able even to look at those documents, for example. So, remember, all of this is general features, okay? We're going to go to Site Actions again, and then we're going to click on Create. Because we're going to, we are going to create a website. A subsite. Here it is. Where it says web pages, we have the option 
for a basic web page we're not going to choose that we have the option for a web part page we're not going to choose that and we have the option for a site and workspace we're going to name this uh, restricted area and then you know we're gonna uh, tell our audience what this uh, site is all about then we're going to create the URL uh, remember no spaces on URLs it doesn't like spaces so I'm going to type restricted restricted underscore area and uh, once again uh, we'll explore these features uh, later on templates we're going to go to the uh, publishing template without the workflow which simplifies things and we're going to use unique permissions pay attention please unique permissions because we're going to break the inheritance from the main site this site is not going to have permissions like the rest of my site but it's going to have restricted so uh, independent permissions so we're breaking that uh, inheritance and we're using unique permissions and then I'm going to click on create now as opposed to the other lessons we have seen in which authenticated users are by default allowed to see your website now what does that mean authenticated users well the name in itself tells you what what it means authenticated means users that uh, have a username and a password will be able to see your site remember we are inside a portal so this is not a public place but it's uh, restricted to people that have a username and a password now who has a username and a password all the students all the classified employees and all the faculty and all the administrators have usernames and passwords but in this case authenticated users are not part are not a part of the visitors there's no one allowed because by breaking the inheritance we're also uh, blocking everybody from accessing our site so we're going to need to add them so uh, if, you, if it's the students from your class well, what you can do is just uh, from the roster select all of them uh, copy them and paste them here and the easy way to do that is if you paste it on Excel and just copy the column where all the names are at or uh, by clicking on this button that says check names I'm sorry that says browse you can add the users so for example I'm going to add Steven Alexander I tried to find this user and there it is I'm gonna add it I'm gonna add another user I'm gonna use my Smith I'm gonna look for it and he's going to find Two Mike Smiths, one of them uh, a co-worker and another one student. How do I know it's a student? Well, because after the add symbol, uh, after his username, there's an add symbol, and after the add symbol, it doesn't say MCCD; it says campus, which means that's a student. So I'm going to add not a student but the co-worker. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to add. We wanted to add a group. I'll show you where to do it. 
So I'm going to add these two users. Now let's say uh, that I want to add a group. I'm sorry, I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up. I don't want to go there. Because those are existing groups. I'm going to show you that later on, OK? So there, we added users. So I added two visitors to my site, OK? Those are persons that can look at the content. But let's say that I have a uh, I'm a professor and I have a student that aids me, that helps me modify the content of the website. So I'm going to add that student here, where it says members of this site, because they can contribute. They can create a group of site members or reuse an existing SharePoint group, okay? So they can create content on my website. So I'm going to add here um, Mike Kushner. And if you see, I didn't add him uh, on the browse button. So I'm going to click here on check names and see what happens. See, it found it. It is very similar to when, when you're a uh, sending an email you can type names and it's going to find them for you because it's connected to the same database to active directory so these are going to be people that are allowed to modify uh, files and content within my subsite okay next step i'm going to click okay And uh, there it is. I have created a site that uh, is restricted to the student population, to the faculty population. Only uh, four persons can see this site, which is uh, uh, Alexander uh, Smith and Kushna and myself. However, Kushna and myself, has the, we have the ability to change the content of this website. Now, um, if you click on site actions, let's say you have a committee and uh, more people join your committee. And so you're going to add them to this site so they can collaborate or just look at the contents of the the, uh, the website that you created specifically for that committee. So you go on site actions and then you click on uh, site settings and then you go to people and groups. And here you have the groups that we created. Remember? Automatically. Restricted area members, restricted area owners, a restricted area visitors. So the members are the persons, and of course I'm part of that group. You never remove yourself from any of these groups, okay? <laughs> One rule, otherwise you won't be able to access your site. Keep that in mind. So the visitors, we have Mike Smith and Stephen Alexander, they can look at the content. They cannot modify anything. And the owners, it's myself, I'm the big boss, I can do whatever with this site, whatever I want. And the restricted ADIA members, those are the collaborators, and they can modify this website. Remember, we're not talking uh, about a specific documents on the sites, but we are just doing the generalization. And this concludes this lesson, and the next lesson is going to address issues such as uh, modifying the properties and the permissions on a specific folders or documents within a site, whether restricted or not. Thank you so much.